You see, in my day, the only thing unmarried couples were allowed to do together was sit on a swing. Well, as long as our parents heard the chain squeaking, they figured that we weren't getting it on. <laughs> For months, we simply sat there. Then we tried to do a little trick. We tied the cat to the swing. <laughs> And he kept it going while we got it going somewhere else. <laughs> I want to talk to somebody. You want to speak to Dad? No. I, I want to have him get me in touch with Douglas Fairbanks Sr. <laughs> <laughs> not now, Mother. Of course not now. Tell him to ask Doug to meet me in my room in, in about an hour and to bring some wine and wear his tights. <laughs> well, you uh, really want to work in a photographer's studio? Well, that depends. Do I have to take my clothes off? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> Don't you know what a red light means? Love for sale? He's a wild one, all right. I'll break you yet, Sally. Oh, talk's cheap. Uh, Mother, uh, what time will you be coming home? Oh, don't wait up for us. <laughs> the only person I can remember who was anything like you was our ice man. <laughs> We had a refrigerator. What do we need an ice man for? Someday when you're a little older, I'll explain it to you. I don't want to miss the beginning of the movie. It stars Robert Redford. Oh, Robert Redford's a cream puff. <laughs> They're all cream puffs these days. Except Charles Bronson. Did you see Death Wish? I don't believe it did. Chuck Bronson. Oh, what a man. If only I were ten years younger. This is my wife, Corky. We were married last night. How do you oh. do? Is this your wife? Maybe I do have a shot at Charles Bronson. No, my late husband, Herbert, there was only one thing that would put him to sleep, and that was making love to me. <laughs> There was only one thing that would put me to sleep, and that was the thought of making love to him. When did you have a job? During the First World War. And not only did I make a living, but I served my country. What did you do? I was a hooker. <laughs> I was a hooker, and a damn good one. I'm sorry, Mother Dexter, did we wake you? Yes, you did. And right in the middle of the most beautiful dream I ever had, I was dancing with Charles Bronson. <laughs> Stripped to the waist. <laughs> and he was too. I've got something I want to say to the young man. Come here, kid. <laughs> you used to date Bess, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. Well, now you're dating her. Well, sort of. Well, if you think you're ready now for the pros, forget it. You're not in my league. <laughs> now, you take Warren Harding. He was one of the nicest gentlemen I ever knew. Charming, gallant, witty, Mother. and... <laughs> you knew Warren Harding? 
Well, I, I never told anyone before, but I knew him very well. <laughs> he used to slip me into the White House. Warren G. Harding used to slip you into the White House? That's right. And the G stood for goo-goo eyes. I never knew that. Father, you shouldn't make up false, scandalous stories about presidents in the United States. Yes, there are enough true ones. <laughs> I'm not making it up. Well, anyway, Supervisor Jameson is my boss, and to the best of my ability, as I told him, I will serve him. And I'll do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, day or night. That's the same thing I said to President Harley. <laughs> In the second round, Killer threw the beast out of the ring. And he fell right in my lap. <laughs> 175 luscious pounds of him. <laughs> it was party. Laugh, sing, get it on. <laughs> but I just want to give you a word of advice. Now, the next time you latch on to a fella, try holding out a little longer. I mean, a man's not going to buy a cow if he can have the milk for free. <laughs> oh, no, Mother Dexter, I know what you're doing. Phyllis told me all about you. How you say shocking things and try to catch people off guard. How you try to embarrass them. Well, it's not going to work with me. <laughs> There's nothing you can say that'll embarrass me. No way, huh? <laughs> Come here, honey. Your friend. Mother, uh, Phyllis is entertaining a gentleman oh, here this evening. Don't worry, I'll keep out of their way. But they better not try anything kinky, because <laughs> I'll be in there. <laughs> when I was 16, I was dating a guy who was 68. <laughs> you were? How did it work out? It was wonderful. When it's your first time out, it's good to be with someone who knows the ropes. <laughs> your first time was with a 68-year-old man. Oh, it wasn't my first time. <laughs> I'm just pulling your leg. <laughs> I'm doing my needlepoint. Oh, how nice. Uh, what is the pattern? It's one I made up myself. Charles Bronson. <laughs> In the buff. <laughs> so it is. Hairy devil, isn't it? There's nothing to be ashamed of in being gay. <laughs> gay? Who's gay? <laughs> we were just talking about a, a very nice young, attractive man we know who's that way. Just give him to me for a weekend. <laughs> I'll make a man out of him. I cure Valentino. <laughs> now, when I die, I want to be cremated and have my ashes scattered all over Charles Bronson. <laughs> Course, he goes first. <laughs> then they can scatter him over me. Ooh, me! Wait for me! Wait, wait, wait for me! Wait for me! I didn't know your mother liked golf. It isn't the golf she likes, it's the golfers. <laughs> when Hubie Green bends over to line up a putt with his tight pants. Oh! <laughs> I, I sure hope there's lots of putting. <laughs> a great tournament. Well, who's winning? Oh, who cares? Lee Trevino just split his pants. 
Mother, are you driving for us home? No. Uh, why don't you give her a lift? I'm going to stay around for a while and try to uh, pick me up a widow. <laughs> Were you able to find any grieving widowers? No. I, I stuck out. Oh, that's too bad. Are you finished? Yes. For now. Good, good. Then come on. Come on. Oh, let, let, let's us two go find us a couple of live ones. <laughs> I have always had two very strong beliefs. Number one. A woman should never appear undressed before anybody but her husband or her brothers. Very well put. And number two, I believe that all men are brothers. <laughs> oh, I've heard stories about those wild parties. <laughs> Your boss isn't the kind that would try any hanky-panky with you, is he? Dan, certainly not. Maybe you'll find a better job. <laughs> a pilgrim? No, a worker. He was a guy who flogged the oarsmen. They didn't have oarsmen on the Mayflower? Oh, he wasn't particular. <laughs> Gambling is like love. It's all very fine now and then, but uh, one shouldn't do it for a living. No, not if until you've tried it. You should be ashamed of yourself. You're living in sin. Not yet, but we're working on it. <laughs> now, now for the big one. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid you're not the first. <laughs> First what? <laughs> well, I think I can come to accept that. <laughs> well, uh, as a matter of fact, you're not in the first dirty. <laughs> Sally, let me tell you something. I'd be proud to be in the first 100. <laughs> you're getting warmer. And I'm come to let you know that I'm willing to let bygones be bygones. Why, uh, what do you mean? Oh, you know. All those stories about you and my husband. There was absolutely nothing between me and Rodney. My husband's name was Eugene. <laughs> when do we eat? <laughs> Listen, there's a film company in town. They want my help in blocking off the street for some location oh. shots. What kind of film is it? Uh, it's one of those cops and robber slings. Uh, Charles Bronson's in it. What did you say? When? Just now. Didn't you say Charles Bronson? <laughs> well, uh, there's a movie they're filming downtown and they want to start on Saturday. Oh, get me in the set. Mother Dexter, you're getting married Saturday. Oh, so what? <laughs> you'll just have to make a choice between catching one fleeting glimpse of a movie star and joining your life forever to the life of a wonderful, deserving, loving man. Nice fellow you are, sir. <laughs> I was just kidding. <laughs> but, but, but see, if you can get me a lock of his hair from his chest. <laughs> Even though Arthur may have his faults, he is wonderful in the bedroom. <laughs> he gets those sheets so tight, you can bounce a quarter off them. I allowed a man to kiss me on my second date. Oh, I never let a man fool around with me on the second date. You didn't? If he didn't do it on the first, I ditched him. 